Anyway, dude, <laughs> that was a good one to kick things off. Why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, tell my chat who you are. I think most of them already know. In fact, some of my chat you've actually met um, because they've came over to your chat before. Why don't you yeah, go ahead, uh, tell you us what you do, way. tell us uh, what you're about. To be, to be honest, like it's, it's still crazy to me that people know who I am. Mm -hmm. Like that is, you probably have to as well. Like you just go into like a Twitch chat or you go into like on YouTube, you comment somewhere and people are like, oh, that's way And You're just like, well, I'm, I'm just me, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's especially weird for me because I only started making content about four and a half to five months ago. Um, well, to be, to be fair, I didn't start as Chevelle Rick. Mm. that long either like i started making videos like i think early this year like i remember okay. making my goal on twitter to get 250 subscribers yep on youtube at the end of the year and we're currently pushing 2000 yep which is crazy and, I, I by the way i have seen your exactly. goals you like to put your goals on twitter and yep. uh it seems like every time you put those goals you seem to blow past them um yes but so. the year the, the one from the year before i didn't reach oh gotcha okay um but to introduce myself i i pretty much funnily enough i started just mainly streaming um how far do you want me to take this back because i can go back like 10 years <laughs> just go back to the uh beginning of the name chivalric how about that okay so i started streaming under the name chivalric about two years ago two and a yeah. half years ago yeah um i was pretty much playing pokemon i was like why am i not oh, streaming nice. this like yeah. I'm I'm playing this. Why am I not streaming it? Yeah. So I started streaming Pokemon, and I really built my channel around Pokemon at my peak, so to say. Mm. I was averaging like five followers a day, and I was averaging like fifteen to twenty viewers. Yeah, which, which is, is not more bad. Than I currently do that with RuneScape. Yeah, but I'm, I was getting really burned out because I was just shiny hunting. But to be fair, Pokemon is a much more popular game than RuneScape. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. But that community is ten times more toxic than the RuneScape community. Wait, wait. Pokemon is more toxic than RuneScape? <laughs> yes, bro. You need way to elaborate. More toxic. I think the RuneScape okay. community is. <laughs> hey, listen, you guys, you're great. But RuneScape suffers from elitism, from being such an old game, right? So yeah, I want you to yeah. tell me why Pokemon is more toxic than RuneScape. Because I would never in a million years think of Pokemon as toxic, right? But I, I, well, I, I don't have much experience with Pokemon. The most is I've watched Small Ant, you know, and his <clears> Nuzlocke. Oh, That's Small about Ant. it. He's great. Yeah. The, the main reason why they're toxic is... So to me, right? Yeah. A Pokemon game should just be a new region... With new Pokemon mm -hmm. and new places to explore. Okay. That I is agree. what I want, and I think everyone wants from a Pokemon game. You just want the same thing, but just, you know, yeah, in a new do, setting, I guess. Do what you do good at. Like, don't try and reinvent yeah, exactly. the wheel. Just redo exactly. what, you, what you're good at. Yeah, I agree. And whenever they do that, it's like, oh, they're lazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Game Freak doesn't care. Yeah. Oh, it's the biggest gaming company. How can there be glitches in the game? Yeah. Oh, how can can the graphics look poorly? I'm like, you guys don't understand. First of all, it's made on a Switch. A Switch is, I'm pretty sure, equivalent to PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Okay. Yep. In hardware. Yep. Like, what do you expect from graphics? Yeah. Yeah, a Pokemon there, game there, is not a game that needs to be graphically intensive. I feel like because I used to play, you know, like Pokemon Ruby was my favorite yeah. Pokemon game. Um. Yeah. And I played that when I was a kid. And, like, the graphics were not what I cared about, right? Like, at no, all. Yeah. Not at all. But anyway, how does that lead to toxicity in the community? Well, it's, it's mainly, like, if you... Like, everything they do, mm -hmm. it's just being picked apart in the most toxic manner. Like, whenever there's a Pokemon trailer, um, I, I generally, I will message you the next time there's a Pokemon trailer okay. to just tap the... Um, like hashtag that is related to Scarlet and Violet and just read the replies. Okay. Yeah. So you it's think people horrible. are just like hypercritical of Pokemon, even though you think they're doing a okay job is what I'm getting at. I think they're doing exactly what I, what I personally want because yeah. I'm a former Call of Duty player, just like you. Yeah. And all we wanted was a new game with new maps, new guns and mm -hmm. slightly different mechanics. And then yep. we got advanced warfare and fin infinite warfare, yep. black ops three and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Did you watch my video the other day? <laughs> no, I, I had a whole discussion that. about about call of duty the other day so that's funny okay okay so you started as a pokemon content yes. creator actually gaining more popularity from doing pokemon than you do from runescape yeah. what made you switch to runescape from pokemon 
It was mainly because I was shiny hunting. Better question. How long have you played RuneScape? Uh, 16 years. Okay, I gotcha. Years. Yeah, me too, me too. For almost yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. 17 years for me, so. Damn. Yeah, I think I think I think next year, it's it's this account I'm currently playing on mm-hmm. is sixteen and a half years old. Gotcha. But I believe the one that I had before is like half year old. Yeah, I have a video on my channel about my first account, and when I did yeah. when I took a look at it, it was seventeen and a half years old. Um, but I don't play Jeez. on that account. But okay, I okay. Wish I still had it. I so what? Still did. What made you switch to RuneScape? It it, it was mainly I I was seeing that success mm-hmm. and with Pokemon. Yeah, and I was struggling to turn on my stream, not because mm. of the success, but because I was shiny hunting, and the shiny hunting method in Pokemon Sword and Shield is broken. It doesn't yeah. work how it's intended to. Yeah. Or they might have intended it, but it's just very... Isn't like, it just... Don't... And excuse me if I'm wrong, but yeah. isn't shiny hunting generally just you, you set yourself up and you reset over and over and over and over? For example, but the way it should have worked in Sword and Shield, not to bore everyone, because it should be a RuneScape discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty much, like, it was supposed to be you knock out 500 Pokemons, and after you've done that, you increase your odds to 1 in 512 instead of 1 in 1,000. Okay, gotcha. If you had to shine it off. Yeah. That, that, in general, is, to me, a good way to do it, because you get rewarded for putting the time in. Yeah. And obviously, along the way, you can find it as well. But it didn't work as intended. And it kind of burned me out on the game, and I just struggled to turn on the stream. So I was like, there's one game that I always enjoy playing, yeah. and that's RuneScape. RuneScape, yeah. Yeah, I, so I, I can like, see you that. Know what? I'm just going to stream RuneScape and see how it goes. So how long have you been making RuneScape content then? Um, About six months, you said? or So on, on, on YouTube for like nine months, but I've been streaming RuneScape now for like a year and a half at this gotcha. point. Gotcha, yeah. And the funny thing is I started my YouTube channel just to promote my streams. Yeah. And now... <laughs> 100%. <laughs> now it's like... <laughs> now your no YouTube's doing around. much better than the streams. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I, I think people that start streaming without any form of outside, uh, you know, promotion, uh, like a YouTube channel or even like yeah. a Twitter or something, uh, you're going to have a really tough time just streaming, right? And especially, especially RuneScape, because mm-hmm. any other game, you can talk about what's going on. Mm-hmm. For example, if you play through the story of a Pokemon game or whatever game, you can just commentate like, oh, that is quite funny what they were saying. Or, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, this, this, yeah, this Runes- area looks so sick. I mean, RuneScape has quests and stuff, but there's a lot of stuff in RuneScape that is a lot of downtime with nothing that yeah. interesting going on. I mean, look at what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Super fun. Dude. Yeah, like, <laughs> but let's say you have to do this. Yeah. Like, you can't progress your account without doing your current divination. Mm-hmm. And it's also during the time you have to stream. Yeah. Or you can only play after work, for example, and it's also the only time you have to stream. What do you do? Yeah, exactly. This was something I feel like I struggled with early on. Um, Mm -hmm. And it sucks, I think, if you have a smaller chat. Um, 100%. Because I notice whenever uh, my chat is, you know, 50 people or more, (laughs) enough people are generally talking that we can... uh, Watch me hit this rock for 100 hours. Exactly, dude. <laughs> but enough people are yeah, generally people talking that we can keep going. <laughs> uh, keep it somewhat interesting when people are talking in chat, right? But 100%. if you and only have 10 people in your chat and you're doing divination, you have to be one of the most creative goddamn beings on earth to come up with something interesting to talk about during that session, right? Yeah. So yeah, 100%. I think you're right about that. I mean, other games have grindy parts, but I feel like they don't. RuneScape's a grind. We all know this. It's one of the reasons it's, it's just I like it. Yeah. I've always loved RuneScape for its grind, but that is part of it, yeah. So what do you prefer more? Do you prefer streaming or making YouTube videos? Mm, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think it's they're, they're too different for yeah. me. Yeah. Because I feel like with, with a stream, you could just turn it on, be yourself, play the game, have fun, have a good chat with people, yep. and go from there. But with YouTube videos, you more have to have a concept and an idea to work on, etc. And currently, I'm overflowing with ideas and content, and mm-hmm. Jagex is also the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, um, so what kind, yeah. of, what kind of videos do you put on your YouTube? Uh, I've seen a few different uh, videos that you do. I've seen, I saw your Fresh Start World stuff. I saw... Yeah. Um, You've been working on your Iron Man. You've got Trim Comp coming up. You've got 
uh, commentary on Jagex decisions, right? You do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, thank you, by the way, Chuck, for the compliment on editing skills. My editing skills are nowhere near the old school ones. <laughs> Those are insane, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's mainly like I mainly did discussion videos mm -hmm. and that kind of started because I feel like I sometimes have a bit of a different opinion on things like other people. Like yeah. I'm not afraid to say it. Mm -hmm. I don't think Treasure Hunter is that bad. Yeah. This is one of the reasons and, you're on my stream yeah. right now. We're going to get exactly. into it. <laughs> of course, dude. Uh, I think having a, a lots of discussions like that is good, too. I think it's good to hear both sides of an opinion, right? And to be able to have a discussion about it instead of just what you see on maybe Reddit, where it's just two people getting mad at each other without them actually listening to each other's points, right? Yeah. So. Uh, but and yeah. I feel like also a lot of people don't... Like, I got a comment yesterday that mm -hmm. I found very interesting because I made a video saying old school RuneScape needs MTX. Yeah, I, I know. I saw bit, that video. Yeah, obviously it's a bit of a clickbait <laughs> It's It's video. a clickbait title. It's not exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> what did it mention? Hey, man, you got to do what you got to do. I know the hustle. I respect exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and, but, 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 but I said in the video, I don't want it, but I think it has to happen to take some load of RuneScape 3. Mm. That was pretty much like my main point. If you really want me to go into detail, go watch that video. Yep. Um, nice. But the nice. thing is that came from it that I thought was very interesting was the fact that someone commented saying, how can you not want something, but then say you need it? Mm -hmm. Which I thought was really interesting because that kind of showed me how certain people seem to think. Okay. That there's like, so in regards to what? Those two how can you opinions. not want something but say you need it? So he is in yeah. regards to microtransactions, I'm assuming. How can you not yeah. want microtransactions but say that you need it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what do you think about that? I, I think that kind of just shows mm -hmm. the issue with the RuneScape community. Or not with everyone, but like with cer certain people that take yeah. a stance. Like, yeah. obviously, I don't want MTX in the game, period, at yeah. all, like personally. But I also do understand why it's needed yeah. and its place within the game. So for me, um, I think if we really took back everything about microtransactions and everything, I think I really, yeah. if I have to find something that I did have an issue with, it is, mm -hmm. uh, and this is such a hot topic today, it's all over, mm -hmm. it's the gambling loot boxes. The, yeah. the, the gambling aspect of it. Uh, I used to work in a casino. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just six months ago, I was I was moving up the ranks at a casino, and I've seen gambling, and I've seen the slot machines and how they work. And bro, it, like Treasure Hunter, these uh, these now these new yak tracks that are random. Yeah. It's very similar to slot machines and how they work. A hundred percent. Yeah, and that's that's where I really find I have the major problem with um with microtransactions. Right, I have a bunch of little problems. With all kinds of other parts of microtransactions, but that would be the major problem for me. I think my main issue is like, obviously, I don't like the way it's implemented, mm -hmm. but I also like I'm a firm believer of microtransactions that are a direct payment. Yeah, I, I don't I, mind paying twenty dollars for a stupid sunshine override. Yeah, yeah, through rune coins because you can get those rune coins through actual gameplay by buying bots. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And like I said, like if they got rid of any of the gambling aspect of it, I would be I would feel so much better about supporting it. Right. Um, but it's literally yeah. uh, I know they're having troubles in the UK right now, but isn't it going to be illegal at some point for loot boxes to exist in some way, shape or form? Please don't tell the Dutch government. Yeah. But it's already illegal oh, okay. in the Netherlands, so I'm technically yeah. not allowed to play RuneScape. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Um <laughs> we have somebody like that in uh in my mods as well. Um uh, Miff. He's he's always talking about how it's technically illegal in Sweden as well, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm pretty sure they're they're looking into it. Mm -hmm. Like it wouldn't surprise me. This is like conspiracy theory, yep. like Oh, let's hear it. I'm down. Yep. There have been rumors that they're trying to sell Jack the um the investors. Did you watch my video? No. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> I literally, I. bro, in my first video where I talked about what I thought was a problems uh, that I saw with the original yeah. iteration of Fresh Start Worlds, mm -hmm. I literally said I think they're trying to sell Jagex. Yeah. Now I'm a, but I'm a big conspiracy guy. I love that stuff. 
Um, oh, same. Yeah, same. Yeah. I have a good podcast. For I don't you. necessarily <laughs> believe any of it, but I love like digging into it. I think it's super it's, fun to it's talk about. It's interesting how people jump through certain hoops to mm-hmm. make a story mm-hmm. Absolutely. work. But Absolutely. I generally think that because I believe that in Europe, they want to like fully, fully ban it. Like you can have microtransaction, but you mm-hmm. can no longer have loot boxes, period. So As, who, who just said it in chat? Someone just said it right now. You need to show the odds and they're showing mm-hmm. it. But I believe they want to like fully ban it. And I believe that they're just pumping up the numbers yep. so they can sell the company yep. before they have to cut that loss yep. of not being able to do microtransaction. I it, it's uh, and I've seen a lot of very well educated uh, comments on this from people who kind of work in um, certain mm-hmm. investment yeah. aspects or understand how companies do pump up their numbers in order, like yeah. prior to a quarter quarterly report, in order to make their company value at a higher amount, so they can sell for more and stuff like that. And I've yeah. seen a few comments on that that got me thinking about it. Who knows if these guys are actually, you know, uh, if I I can actually verify their comments or their authenticity. But I still like to think yeah. about it. It's still fun to think about it, and it kind of does make sense, right? Um, oh, it does, hundred percent. Now, here's another thing I did want to say. I don't think all loot boxes and all gambling and video games should be illegal. I think they should require you to prove you're over eighteen, though. Oh, that's one hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Like, that that's where I, I have I'm the also... issue. I think adults, if someone adult spends you know a thousand dollars on RuneScape treasure hunter keys, that's his own fucking problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 100%. I'm not going to do it, but that's up to him. He's an adult. He can make decisions. What I don't like is children that have access to maybe funds or, you know, like I, I have a one-year-old right now. When he gets older, I don't want him, when I give him, you know, 50 bucks allowance a week or something like that, for yeah. 45 of those dollars to go to Candy Crush. Um, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? 100%. I don't think kids are in the right mind to be able to make decisions about things like that. No, and I think that is one of the reasons why I have a bit of a bit less of an issue with it being in RuneScape because I think it's well known that the majority, like I believe, like over ninety percent of the player base is above eighteen years and old. Yeah, I, like, I would go, assume go so. Go look at your your YouTube statistic right oh, now. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't eighteen, have bro. Below 18, my actually. YouTube statistics, we got we're all twenty five and older, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the other thing is, is. I don't know if you remember this, mm. but best in slot items used to come from Treasure Hunter and RuneScape. I did that. I don't remember this because I yeah, didn't so play much point, with Treasure Hunter came until recently. Hunter. Yeah. So wait, what, what do you mean? What actually came from Treasure Hunter? Sorry. Uh, Chaotix. When they, I don't believe they were like best in slot at the time, but they were like second best in slot. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I hate that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> and. To me, like right now, yeah, you get experience and mm. yeah, you get lamps. And sure, there's sometimes these overrides yep. where I'm like, sure, you can still buy them with money. Obviously, they're ridiculously expensive. Yeah. Like GP. But yep. Yep. then again, I'm also like, they're just cosmetics. And I understand that people want them. But then again, does it really impact your gameplay? And people, like with the experience, people say, like, oh, you can buy a rank on the leaderboards or whatever or you can buy a max cape oh i don't know if you've ever seen a friend's video from yeah like it costs a lot of ago. money it costs a lot yeah, a lot exactly. of money i, I mean there, there's there's two there's two sides to that though because Honestly. it costs a lot of money um does that make it okay or is that just make some people who have that kind of money spend that much money when they probably shouldn't in the first place like people talked about this with diablo immortal right uh mm-hmm. you could spend there was no cap to it there's people who yeah. spent uh, half of a million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars on Diablo Immortal. Yeah, is should that be legal? <laughs> should you be able to spend that kind of money, like what you're getting in return? Like I said, I don't know. Uh, when it comes to adults, they can make their own decisions, and people with money and stuff. But yeah, um, does that make it okay because the amount is so high or the price is so high? Well, I mean, are you allowed to spend half a million on Amazon on chocolate? Yeah, you definitely are. Like obviously, it's 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 a bit of a strange. You might end up with a couple cavities, uh, but yeah, for oh. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's not it's okay, not but it should it should be illegal. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I I completely agree with that, a hundred percent. Um, I but I also, I also think did... when you put an amount like if let's say mm-hmm. it costs thirteen thousand dollars to max in RuneScape, I think then. People, there are people that will spend that much, and I think it's up to the game to be more responsible and make that a, amount a little bit lower. Like I think morally, they should do that. It it generally wouldn't surprise me yeah. in the future. Yeah, 
that they will allow you to fully buy a max account? I uh, will see. Um, I think that is the, something I would be against, by the way. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think um, right now we're just tiptoeing around all these things. Like even when uh, Fresh Start Worlds, I think mm. it was when Fresh Start Worlds came out. I'm not sure, but they were talking about, or it might have been this Yak Track, but they were talking about just selling levels instead of selling you experience, right? And it's, yeah, it was it's, with a uh, Yak Track with like yeah. the amount of points you. Uh, sorry, with uh, Fresh Start Worlds, the amount of points you get, you just get leveled. Yeah. So it's those little tiny steps that we take every once in a while as we keep pushing that boundary a little bit further until we are just selling you a maxed account, right? Um, I think because I, I remember back in the day, like you said, well, I mean, you did say that you could buy best in slot stuff, um, yeah. but let's take a look at even just the experience you're getting now through Treasure Hunter. It feels like it's a lot more. I remember watching a Pro Talks video a couple months ago about uh, those portables where you could like use all of your Protean items at once or something. Mm-hmm. These things are just coming closer and closer to being actual XP being sold or actual levels, right? True, but then again, also, like, this is where choice comes in again, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. If you don't want it, go play an Iron Man. And if you yeah. don't want to, if you don't want it on your main, you can just press the X button on the top <laughs> left yeah. on your treasure hunter thing yeah. and not use your keys yeah. and don't get those rewards. Fair enough, man. I. It's, I think a, a lot of people, and where I might struggle with this, is just mm-hmm. RuneScape is such an old game, and people really used to value those kind of achievements. Yeah. And obviously, after years and years and years, they they no longer have any value, right? I, I would no. say that most achievements on a main character that are not related to PVM or pushing that hardcore content don't really have as much value as they used to, right? Maxing in RuneScape does not mean the same thing it used to mean. Um. No, and, the, and and I think it's that, that change okay. that and let me let me finish. I think it's that change yeah, no. that will make that makes people so angry about it and makes it be such a controversial topic. But I don't even think you're actually that wrong. I think uh yeah, that's just the way it is now and people need to accept it to be honest. The thing is it's not hard. Like back in the day when you saw your friend with a 99 fletching cape, you were like, "Yo, mm-hmm. he's a gamer." <laughs> he's a gamer. Absolutely. But now you're just like, oh, cool, bro. Yeah, yeah. Then, I mean, I don't have 99 fletching like... just yet, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> go get it. Yeah. Go, go buy your brothels. <laughs> I do, I do. But then again, nowadays, I don't. do you know how many people have completed the hard clue scroll log in RuneScape? No, I have no idea. Um, Rambo, you're in chat right now. I'm pretty sure it's still less than 10. Less than 10 people total? Yes. On RuneScape 3? On RuneScape 3. So that is 10 people, like, let's call it 10. Oh, wait, does that include, like, the third age and stuff like that? Is that why? Everything. Like, full out color. Wait, that's been completed? I thought that had never been completed. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's been completed. I I think, I think it's, like, eight times, nine times. I know the Clue Chaser Discord has the leaderboard on it. Yeah, yeah. When you see, like, those are the big achievements now, Golden Reaper or um, other certain collection logs, like the Zog collection log, or name something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those achievements are unreal. The fact that a game can be exist for 20 years and there's an achievement that only nine people have completed is absurd. I think it's awesome. I love stuff like that, by the way. Let me actually see if there's a leadable ball. But it's like, I, I think we moved away from 99s being achievements mm-hmm. and instead it's a boss log or yep. a collection log. Or I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, whatever. I, 100%. And people just need to accept it at this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I think gaming in in general has changed for its achievements. Uh, And it's probably, you see this even just with less people playing uh, MMOs in general. I think the Mm -hmm. time sync being the achievement, that idea is kind of changing. And it's more the difficult content that's becoming the achievement. Uh, Take a look at any popular MMO right now. What's the most popular content in retail World of Warcraft? Well, it's the top level mythic rating. What's the most popular content in Final Fantasy XIV? It's the Savage Raids, I believe they're called. Uh, what's the most popular content in RuneScape 3? Well, it's pushing in rage. Like, these are the things that people really care about nowadays. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Oh, you don't work. Uh, you can stay at home all day and play video games all day. Well, you're going to have a faster time maxing your character than somebody else. So is it really an achievement or is it just time invested? Exactly. And I think it's that distinguishing between those two is where this conversation lies in controversy and struggle for some people, right? Um music concert in the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. The top content in Final Fantasy fourteen is actually uh, going to a nightclub and dancing with a bunch of half naked um, cat people. So, <laughs> does someone have a link to this game, please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, Shovel Rick needs to download it quick. <laughs> um, um. Anyway, dude, uh, to kind of move on, did you have any questions for me? I know. Uh, uh, wait, let me let me actually have my file. But I, I think, oh yeah, that that's something I promised to explain on your stream mm. about MMOs and why the popularity is like decreasing. Yep. Let's hear um, it. So there's this thing called Endgame Syndrome. Okay. EGS Endgame for short. Syndrome, yeah. Okay. Um, Endgame Syndrome is something that is kind of like it's it's something it it has to do with short attention span, but it mainly has to do with something else. Is early two thousands when we all started playing RuneScape. Yep. How many games did you have, like realistically? I think I had more than the average person uh, okay. because my dad was a huge gamer. Right. But I see what you're getting at. Like, how many mm -hmm. games did I actually play? Not many. Five, maybe six. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I remember that I had Pokemon Emerald. I had mm -hmm. RuneScape. Mm -hmm. I had Spyro 3. Nice. And I had some racing games. Yep. Obviously, those are not really... Gran Turismo. Like... I hear you. No, I, I don't know which ones I actually had, but there were some cracky ass PS one. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Could have been Grand Turismo. Wait, wait, what's sure. the, Twisted Metal? Could have been. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> um, but my point is, is yep. if you like in Emerald, you know when you need to, and same with Ruby and Sapphire, you need to do the whole diving sequence. Mm -hmm. As someone who doesn't speak English as his first language mm -hmm. and can't, you know. I didn't know where to go because obviously I didn't read the dialogue. I just yeah. <laughs> mashed A through it. Dude, that I game was tough enough when English. I was young and I did speak English. So I hear you. Exactly. <laughs> and the thing is like, but the thing is you had two choices. You yep. either would restart the game mm -hmm. or you would just try everything until you found where you needed to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair. And because you didn't have that many games. Yep. You, you had to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. kind of had to figure it out. Obviously, YouTube and like websites were just coming up, and it, it, it was it was difficult. It was, 100%. And what I'm trying to get at is there's actually full-on research done on this. I I think I've heard about it before. But yeah. We'll try and find a link for you. But the thing is, it's like they figured that, because that was the case back in the day, that's why we all like stuck with games, and that's mm -hmm. where you know, we found love for games and where the whole thing of like time investment came in because we invested so much time. We, you know, we don't want to also move on to another MMO, for example. That's a whole other discussion. Yes, it is. Yep. MMOs. Just Drive Ace made a really good video on that. Yep. But the main thing is, and the reason why I knew about it is games nowadays need to catch you within the first two hours of gameplay yep. because there's so many more competitors out there. Absolutely. Why would you be stuck in RuneScape looking around on where to go when you can just play another free game yep. and not have to be stuck and yep. look around where to go? Yeah. Well, and part of it is to, um, like back in the day, people play video games differently. And I've talked about this a few mm -hmm. times before, but you kind of touched it on that here is that like back in the day, if you wanted an actual walkthrough for a video game, you couldn't even find them on the internet. 90% of the no. guides on the internet were made up and they were fake and they were trolls. Yeah. Like people thought yeah. it was funny to make fake ones. So the only way to get an authentic walkthrough was to go down to like Blockbuster or Walmart or something. And you had to buy the actual games walkthrough. And even yeah. then half the time, those walkthroughs wouldn't tell you everything. There was still Easter eggs and stuff they left hidden. Uh, I used yeah. to have the RuneScape handbook. Bro, that game didn't. Uh, that book did not help with RuneScape at all. <laughs> it told you to oh, train wow. your attack by like killing goblins until level fifty, <laughs> and it never told you to train your strength. Which, if you just train your attack first, I can't remember what it actually said. It's been quite a while, but it was something along mm -hmm. those lines. Just horrible advice, right? Uh, but nowadays, literally, we have the wiki button in game. Uh, people play with information overload on the second screen. Uh, it doesn't matter what game you're playing, you generally have a guide open, especially with MMOs, right? And yes. I think, while I, I, you're never going to change that because people always want to progress faster, but I think it does take out some of that uh, figuring it out for yourself kind of engagement. And I think that's where, that's why we all love RuneScape so much is because when we first started playing it, a lot of us had to figure it out for ourselves. We had 
friends who told us things that might or might not be true. Like, you know what I mean? You just really had to figure out things for yourself. And that's what I think stuck us all. That's why we're all 25 and older now. Even though at one point we were all playing this game when we were 14. Man, I was playing even when I was seven or eight. I was nine, but yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> but the the thing is, is I think the main issue with RuneScape is, and something that kind of scares me, mm-hmm. uh, is something they recently said in one of the live streams with DRS guy. Yep. And it is that they don't want to give too much. Like, they don't want to hold your hand too much. And I feel like if they genuinely really want to, like, grow this game, yeah, they need to give us, like, an option where when you start your account, you say, I've never played before. I want to play in tutorial mode or save mode or whatever. Yeah. And, like, fully, fully hold your hand through the entirety of free-to-play or whatever they decide. I think to. they try to do that. Uh, I don't know how recently you've made a character. I guess you did with Fresh Start Worlds, but you probably clicked. I've already with played before, path. right? Um, they, but they, they've tried to do this when I, when I played again, like there's these mm-hmm. paths and this tutorial, it's horrible. It exactly. doesn't tell you shit <laughs> exactly. and it has nothing to do with most of the rest of the game. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. I think a, a good example of this is, and I've talked about this a lot is the yeah. quest, uh, order. Mm-hmm. Uh, every single quest like tells you, uh, in order to appreciate this quest, you need to do this, 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 and this, and this, right? But some of those yeah. quests in the suggested requirements have way more requirements than the quest you're actually looking at. Mm-hmm. And then some of the rewards don't line up. So in order, in order to actually understand the storyline of the game, you have to play in a very inefficient manner. You have to do your quests yeah. in a really backwards way. That's just one example of a horrible way of handholding. How is a new player, and me, I experienced this, right? How am I supposed to come mm-hmm. into the game and enjoy the story when it's not beneficial for me to go through the story in its proper order? And that's, I think, where it's good with the new approach of the new storylines, where it's just like, we're going to have, like, this new storyline, like, for example, the new Legacy of Zamrak one. Yeah. It starts with Daughter of Chaos. You don't need any prerequisites. This is where it starts. It is where it's going. Yeah. Which is a good thing. And I'm obviously, I also understand that they can't retroactively just change all the other... No, of course not. um, Well, quests are such a vital uh, part of your account's progression, right? So you can't go yeah. changing that. But I think that is the first issue to begin with is yeah. I've had friends who started playing RuneScape, did the activity path, and then they asked me, so what do I do next? Yeah. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What do you do next? Well, what do I do next? I'm like, well, you set yourself some goals and you work towards it, but what kind of goals do I set? And I had to tell them, and I feel like the game yeah. should be telling it. And actual proper goals, like whether that's going for barrels gloves, whether that's going for this or whatever is relevant in today's. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, it's it's tough because there are so many different goals and some of the requirements True. and things like you have to do this to do this to do this to do this to do this. So it's it's hard to explain that in a super easy to understand manner. Um, yeah, which I'm okay with. I don't mind a game being complicated in nature. Um, but yeah. I think new players are a little lost at what to do as well, though, because RuneScape is kind of a game where you you do just go do what you want. Yeah, uh, That's part of the gameplay. Like, if you're playing, let's say, uh, World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, well, right now I'm level 5. I need to be level 6. It's very obvious what you need to go do. Uh, yeah. RuneScape doesn't necessarily work in that way. You know, you have people who have never trained a combat skill. 99 everything else, right? Skillers. And you can just play your own way. So sometimes when people are used to a certain type of gaming. It's hard for them. They're used to always being told what to do. They kind of shut their brain off when they play video games. It might be a difficult transition when it really is up to them. Whatever they want, they can do, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think it's even more important, like you said, because all those other games yeah. do this and RuneScape refuses to do it. And I think they need to give us, they need to give those people an option mm. and like give a fully like, really hardcore hand-holding thing where they teach you the real basics. And Mm. I couldn't even tell you right now what that would be. Yeah, yeah. It's just an idea. Here's the thing. And I think we all, everybody in chat, you and me, everyone knows this. RuneScape does not see new players. It sees returning players, lapsed players, 
every once in a blue moon, we get a genuine new player, but they are few and far between. And most of them start on old school because it just has more popularity, right? Yeah. So what is the solution? I think you are onto something, but I, I don't know what it would look like either, right? You and me aren't game developers. It's not our job to know what that would look like. It's our job to have an idea and an opinion about it. But that's about yeah. it, right? I, I would love to. The thing is, like, for me as well, like, I think with a group of people, I would be able to work this idea out. But then again, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair, dude. <laughs> skill by skill uh, guide of each skill up to level 40. Yeah. I feel like, and another thing, hear me out on this. I feel like RuneScape's tried to do this over the years. They've had like a few different tutorials now, right? It was like Ashenvale was a tutorial once. Yeah. Or not Ashenvale. What's the area? Uh, uh, Ashdale. Ashdale. Thank you. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we have Tutorial Island and then it went away. And now Tutorial Island's in some quest. And like, they've changed it so many times that it feels like the, the new player experience in Birthorp is really bloated and overloaded with all these different ideas. Like, I feel like you're being hit with a hundred different ideas from a hundred different J mods, and it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Do you know what I mean? And it, yeah, and that's why I think, like, the, like they've locked themselves, as you said, to mm -hmm. Birthhold, which is a very bloated area with a lot of content. Yeah. Why limit yourself to Birthhold and Tavoli when you have this entire free-to-play area yeah. to play with? Maybe use, I don't know... Falador for more smithing and mining because the dwarves are close by. You could almost, use... dude, that's actually a great idea. You could yeah. set like a, a choice to the player. Do you want to level up your character to be more progress in smithing and mining, to more progress in combat? Like kind of yeah. give it a direction and then send, set them in the right area. I think that's a really good idea, actually. Like that would pick be so your cool. path system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then like, because that, that would give the that player identity it. right away. And I yeah. think that's what's lacking is people lack an identity with their character. They don't know what they should be because there's, you know, so many different skills here. They don't understand most of them. So that, that's actually a really good idea. And I think if you go through the like fisher and cooking path and the mining and smithing path and the combat path and the uh, crafting and whatever path, yeah, you will have a very good basic understanding of the game. And yep. if you have, like, for example, sheep shear will be a part of the crafting path, and mm -hmm. the knight sword will be a part of the smithing path. Yep. You will also teach them how to quest and be like, oh, okay, so I can also get smithing experience through quests, and oh, I can also get better rewards or better unlocks for this, this skill if I do another quest, and yep. just build it up that way, and as you said, get identity. Yep. I love oh, it. The yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yes. <laughs> What's that? Have you never played that one, the dragon tutorial on RuneScape in like 2009 or something? No, dude. When, once, um, I don't know when I stopped playing like RuneScape as it is. Uh, it was a little bit before old school came out, but I don't think I played that. That doesn't sound familiar to me. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly and chat, if, 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 if I'm missing something out, please tell me. You would spawn in the Lumbridge. I think it's the pub now in old school RuneScape. Okay. Um, like the, the the house next to the willow tree. Yep, yep. You would spawn underneath in the basement, and there was this white knight or something that you had to help yep. defeat this dragon. And it would literally, I'm pretty sure, teach you mining and <laughs> wood cutting, and then you would take on this dragon, and that was it. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, what do you? Th the you know what I think yeah. the appeal of the original tutorial island was. It's and still in RuneScape 3, by the way. I, yeah, I know, I know. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think the appeal of that, though, and I think something that a lot of games are losing, and I want to hear your opinion on this, mm -hmm. is that, that main character uh, story syndrome. Like, I feel like the yeah. original old school uh, tutorial is you're an adventurer, you're put in this world, you're not the main character, you're just one of the many, right? And yeah. I see it with RuneScape storyline, I see it with World of Warcraft, I see it with Final Fantasy, those are my three examples, because mm -hmm. the ones I know... the the best, right? Um, you're always the main goddamn character. I just want to be an adventurer, man. Like, that's why yeah. I, I liked a lot of these games. You know what I mean? What do you think about that? Wait, so you're saying RuneScape is that or is not that? Absolutely. RuneScape suffers extremely from the world guardian main character. It's you versus the world. You are the one guy that saves everything, right? Yeah, and that that's why I'm, I'm glad that you're stepping away for it. I think it's good for the storyline that is. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I think where technically the World Guardian storyline started. Yeah. Because obviously the first quest is just like, you're just an adventurer helping out random people like the Fremenics, the, yep. the, the goblins, the whatever. And then you go into like the more, as you said, the World Guardian part. I think it's good. Yes, they kind of prolonged it a little bit too long. But it's, I think it's good to go back to that adventure again with like new quests, get it a bit grounded again, and then maybe work because I didn't play through it yeah. when it happened. I played through it like whilst it was going on. Yeah. Uh, but I can see from like the old quest to this that you were kind of leading up, kind of like, you know, familiarizing yourself with all these different factions all across RuneScape. And just being that, as you said, adventurer. Mm. And then you suddenly became the main character as the World Guardian because you were the pointed person by God takes to do so. Yep. And I feel like that is reward and investment. It makes sense there. But I think yeah. it went on for too long and I'm I'm really happy they're stepping away from it. Are Maybe, they stepping away from that? Yeah. Is that yeah, something yeah, they've said? Okay, that, that is great to hear. Um, Because like... And yeah, it's been very weird for me. I don't know the RuneScape storyline as well because I have been taking mm -hmm. more of an optimal path on my Iron Man instead yeah. of a storyline-driven one. Um, but yeah, it just feels like every other quest I'm with. And like when you go upstairs in the castle in Birthorp, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you have every storyline's main character in the same room and you're also yeah. there. It's just like, I just, it, it takes away from the massive part of the world because if I'm the main character, it feels like, None of it feels like none of these guys here exist or matter. Do you know what I mean? It's not like yeah. other adventurers around me. It's like this guy is also the world guardian, and so is this person and this person. And I think it kind of takes away from that immersion. I know immersion, cringe, mm -hmm. but it does for me, right? Oh, 100%. And that's what, like, I feel like, um, as Newbie said in chat, like, it's quite deci divisive mm -hmm. that they are stepping away from it. Yeah. Because there's also a lot of people who like it. Yeah, but, that's true. There is, I have heard people say that they enjoy that kind of thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's also, like, I, I think that they should do, like, another four or five years of just regular quests, like, your normal, like, Fremmy storylines or vampire storylines, where you're not really the world guard, you're just helping out these people, mm -hmm. a, being a part of, like, their universe. Yeah. And then after, like, four or five years, start another really big storyline again where you are the main character. Yeah, maybe just have a more healthy balance between the two. Because I don't yeah. think that's really been tried. It's been a lot of, you're the world guardian, man. And it's been that way yeah. for a while, it seems. Because I can name 15 quests off the top of my head right now that I've done where I'm the main goddamn character and the world would basically be over if I didn't exist. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, 100%. And, and yeah, what, I have, do like the storyline. I yeah. think Rinsk, like my main issue with RuneScape storyline, especially like the main ones, like mm. I understand you don't want to do this with the smaller ones. Yep. Is voice acting. Very inconsistent. Some of them are. Yeah. Some of them are not. And I understand why that's the case. It's because obviously these quests, like one quest in the storyline might be made in 2018 and the next one is in 2020. I understand the voice actors yep. will not be available. So you either need to just do something else. Yep. And figure that out. But. I don't think uh, Jagex has any excuse for the inconsistency in voice acting quest because other MMOs have managed to do it for years. Yeah. And Jagex uh, is definitely a top competitor in the MMO like market, right? Yeah. Uh, there, it's a absolutely old school RuneScape and RuneScape three are top tier MMOs, uh, despite what people say. Um, One hundred percent. They should be able to have consistent voice acting throughout their quests. Here's the thing: if you don't want to have voice acting, they should have never introduced quests with voice acting. But to release quests yeah. now that don't have it is weird. Because now that you've had it, you've, you've kind of set that standard, I feel like. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more nuanced in the fact that I understand that they don't want to do, like, for example, Cook's assistant. Yeah, of course. Which, by but, the way, isn't Chef's assistant voice acted? Is it? It might be. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% on that. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> But even so, like, you could also just say, okay, we are going to write out the script mm -hmm. for the entire quest line Yep. before we even start developing the quest. And, you know... That's what a lot of games do. Probably remain the, yeah, exactly. The story yep. will probably remain the same, but just the gameplay around it might differ, which is fine. Yep. And it just... Please, just do it. Because as someone who has very poor eyesight, right? Like, yep. I have about 45% eyesight with glasses. Yeah, so voice acting is huge for you. 
yeah, like I struggle to read the RuneScape dialogue. Like yeah. I can read it, but it's very, very tiring. Yeah. And I would love to really learn about the RuneScape lore without having to watch a video. It's actually such a good point, and I don't think you know this, uh, but my dad is legally blind. Um, right. So he struggles all the time when it comes to video games mm-hmm. and stuff like this. And I didn't even think of this, but the voice acting would totally be huge for him. Um, yeah. He's played RuneScape before with me. He never really brought it up much, but I mm-hmm. guarantee you he much prefers the voice acting quests, of course. And there, there's like an entire list of things I can name that are very inaccessible for people with poor eyesight. Yeah. Um, in RuneScape. And yeah. th- like a lot of them, like some of them are just unfixable because it's just kind of how they are. And I get it. But yeah. Other things, for example, not so much. Get in the yak tweet stick. The witch. Is, <laughs> you have probably no idea what this I is. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a comp requirement called the yak tweet stick. I okay. actually don't know what it does. I know you need it for a master clue, but that's it. Okay. They spawn these really, really small mm-hmm. colored sprites. Yeah. But they have the tiniest click box oh. in RuneScape. Gotcha. They're not only difficult to see, yeah. but they're also very difficult to click on. Gotcha. So question for you, how do you feel about the little tiny uh, birds in the Jad encounter, or the little tiny ones that eat at your prayer? Like original, original fight caves. Um, to be honest, I have no idea because I just... Yeah, yeah, yeah fair. I, 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 I just have... know because I've played at an account recently, right? So I mm-hmm. obviously... And dude, those click boxes on those birds were absurd. They were so bad. <laughs> can, can I... Can I admit something yeah i have not gotten a legitimate fire cape on runescape 3 wait why um i couldn't beat zuck so i darted him but i'm talking about jad uh sorry chat yeah yeah, no, yeah. That's what I mean. sorry. you you darted jad <laughs> yes but you have to fight th- like so many different jads in the fight kill him yeah and i also have both my zuck capes <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> um, I still haven't just fully done. <laughs> really? Why? <laughs> the actual fight cave. Wait, did on your stream the other day, didn't you tell me to get good? Yeah. Bro. Do you have a suck cape, my friend? I don't. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> exactly. No, like, I, so I darted Jad before I was getting good at PVM. Then I yep. got good at PVM. Then I did the kill, which is easy. I got gotcha. you. Zuck, which I really struggled with. Yeah, yeah. Um, but eventually was able to get it. And obviously you do triple jabs in that as well. Yeah. I haven't even attempted Zuck yet. I'm going to soon. Um, I've, luck, I've never been a fan of um, the fight caves. I'm not a fan it. of the fight kiln. And I don't mm-hmm. think I'm going to be a fan. I'm not a fan of the Inferno in old school. And I don't think I'm going to be a fan of Zuck in RuneScape 3. I do not like endurance <laughs> fights. Do you know what I mean? No, I complete. I think wave content is the worst content in any video game. Oh my god, dude. It's so annoying. Especially when it culminates in a very hard battle at the end. Because usually yeah. the waves before it are all just super easy. And it's just an absolute time waste before you actually get to the difficult content where you might lose. I cannot stand it. But I will for do me, it if it's necessary. Yeah, no, right? you will do it. Like, for me, the issue was I could do the waves with yep. Crypt Loom and Magic. Yeah. No problem at all. But I couldn't do enough DPS during the Zuck fight in the DPS phase. Gotcha. So what I did was bring an eight-way range switch. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and use range instead, and I did more than five. Gotcha. Well, I will call you before I attempt Zuck and get some of your advice. Mm-hmm. As someone who also hates wave content, I feel like uh, your advice will be very valuable for me then. <laughs> yeah, to, to, be, to be honest, my best advice, and it goes for anyone in chat, is get through the waves. Yeah. Practice Zuck because obviously the, I don't know if you know, but the waves safe. They like checkpoints. Yeah, I have heard about that. Um, so you just get to Zuck. Yeah. You just try to kill Zuck, and I teleported away a couple of times before I eventually ended up being able to take him out to like mm. fully practice Zuck and then do a full wave and then you be fine. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, man. Well, uh, is there any questions you got for me? There, there are two things that okay. I want to get into. Let's hear so, it. They're, they're long topics again. All right, I, dude, I'm down. I'm down. Okay. Um, first of all, because you're an Iron Man, mm-hmm. I'm going to throw something out there. Okay. Group Iron Man as a concept yep. doesn't work. In RuneScape 3? No, just in general. Why? 
So here's the thing, and here's the issue that I found with Group Iron Man. And I would say like that it would be different for other people. Yeah. But I feel like the main issue that I've also been hearing from other people with Group Iron Man is we had a group with four people. Yeah. There were me and this other guy. Like I was able to play a lot. Yeah. This other guy was being a was able to play even more. And there was another guy that kind of played like medium to a lot of hours. And then there was one guy that didn't play a lot of hours. Yeah. There's always an imbalance, I feel like, in non Absolutely. group Iron Man groups. Absolutely. There always and will be. Exactly. And I feel like unless you really make rules beforehand or, you know, you decide certain things beforehand, like, okay, if you have more time, you will have to provide for the group. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it will not work. So... I kind of agree. This man is clickbaiting verbally. <laughs> I saw that comment. That's hilarious. So I actually kind of agree. Here's the thing. Group Iron Man. You good? Wait, wait. Give me a second. Let me take yep. my hoodie off. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, I'm going to keep going with this. Group Iron Man technically can be done by four main accounts. Group Iron Man is just a Jagex imposed uh, set of rules, right? That make it yeah. so that you can't cheat in this endeavor but you could play group iron man with four main accounts 100 and here's the thing i think group iron man mode as a try hard mode is silly it's stupid i think if four people get together and they all want to try super hard that that's one thing um but i like you're saying is it doesn't work because some people are just going to be able to play more often some people are going to be better at the game some people are going to have just a better time than other people because or some people are going to be benefiting from the people who play more and stuff like that but here's the thing here's why group iron man is a great idea because what it's really about is just getting three of your friends to play with you and you guys just have fun i i I think it's a fun fun it's a fun game mode more than it should be a try hard game mode and a lot of the group iron man groups that i know are um a lot of friends i used to play with Some of them fell Mm -hmm. apart. Some of them aren't playing anymore because of arguments or whatever. But most of them, even if they're down to two accounts, they're playing. And then, you know, a couple months later, one picks it up again. He starts playing for a few months. And it just seems like a good time. I like Group Iron Man. Oh, no, no. Like, I don't hate it. But and as as Solomon said, I'm I'm verbally clickbaiting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also do think that Group Iron Man is not really needed in in RuneScape 3. I I think... I think it would be cool. It it, it would be cool, mm-hmm. but I I mainly just feel like the main reason why I wanted group Iron Man is because on old school RuneScape I'm unable to do Bando solo, okay, or yeah. solo, or yeah, or whatever. So a group Iron Man for me was just being able to play an Iron Man mode. Yeah, but then have people then, do things that you yeah. couldn't do, so it it exactly. stops you from kind of learning it yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean, that could also be said, but it could also be said because you can go bossing with people in your group, right? So it could help you learn the boss, too. Yeah. But yeah, um, I, I know what you're yeah. getting at. And here's here's actually why I don't think it would be as feasible in RuneScape mm-hmm. 3. I think RuneScape 3 has too much stuff locked behind quests. Yeah. Like, Iron Man Endgame plays so, so different than an early game Iron Man. Nothing, none of your resources in early game RuneScape 3 are going to matter much to an end game RS3 Iron Man. And in fact, a lot of the things that makes group Iron Man appealing are done by like invention machines or like, yeah, like, you know, they have solutions to these kind of things. But like in old school RuneScape, it's totally feasible to have one part of your group just be a complete skiller and he just fishes and cooks. But in RuneScape 3, I don't know how feasible that is because the HP doesn't even scale with your level. You have to have the high HP level to even be able to use the high-end food and stuff like that. So I just don't know how well it would compare, right? So I kind of agree with that. Um, but it would still I, be I think, cool to I, see. I think what the Vityaka is saying in chat. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm not even reading chat, so it's good somebody is. Um, <laughs> he, he's saying it's great for content creators, not for um, the average, average Joe, Joe playing, playing with friends. friends. Yeah, and I can see I think that. that is exactly it. Like, I think if it will come out and you, me, two other people would get together yep. and make a group Iron Man mode and make some content on it, it would be fun because we can troll each other, we can do fun things. It's great yep. for content. Yeah. But for the average show, there's just not really a point because, well, you can do everything as uh, Purple Guy is saying on an RC Iron Man together with other people besides 
for journeying with mates mm. and trading. Well, and also it adds that level. And I think what uh, Gunner's saying in chat here, it kind of adds a level of guilt if you do stop playing. Yeah. Yeah. Which you don't want to have, right? Like you want to be able to stop playing or start playing whenever you want. Like that freedom's important, I think, in gaming. If you feel guilty about stopping something, yeah. then you're not going to want to go back to it ever because you don't want to feel that guilt again when you decide to leave again. So that that's actually a good point that I didn't really think of. And I think another thing is for the people that play more, at least that's how I felt, is I don't want to leave the less the people that have are playing less behind. Yeah. But then again, I also don't want to be at Blue Dragons even longer than I have to be to gather the bones. Yeah. Because someone else can't put in the time. No, like, you don't want to purposely hold yourself back because that doesn't feel no, like exactly. any fun either. Like I don't want to just do the boring stuff so then that they when they log in they can just do all the fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah, of course. That's ridiculous. And that's is maybe a bit petty. But yeah. No, that's that's absolutely true. You don't want to put in all the work. Even if it is your friend or something like yeah, bro, I can't imagine just logging in and having all of my dragon bones I need for like 75 prayer just chilling in the bank. Yeah. I, I would, it be, would be nice. It'd be nice, but to the person who has to gather all those, that would not be fun at all. No. <laughs> 100%. A lot of RuneScape content feels geared towards content creators, quest speed, run fresh start, leagues. That you're talking old school content, right? He must all be, yeah. Experiences you can farm for all of those people. except for uh, fresh start are old school exclusive. Yeah, like leagues i love i would love i would love leagues on so Rescape. first of all i do want to say regarding this guy in chat's comment that leagues yeah. are for content creators only completely disagree when i worked no, at same, same when i worked at the casino uh where i worked prior to this Wait, i had a casino i did yeah yeah um i had a bunch of people at my work who didn't play runescape they started right. playing runescape again because of leagues and we had a whole yeah. like group of people at work that was playing runescape None of them were content creators. And at the time, I wasn't a content creator. <laughs> yeah. So that, that no, would be same, the one like, exception. Same. I uh, Leaks for me as well is something that probably... Like, if there's a new leaks, mm. like obviously I will stream it now because I am a content creator. Yeah. But I'll probably not be making videos on it or anything. I'll just be streaming it because I'm playing it anyway. So. Yeah. But it's great. Like, I genuinely think leaks are really fun. And I think it was Twisted Leaks. The second mm -hmm. one that I didn't stream or anything, I just played with my friend. Yeah. And it was the most fun I've had on RuneScape, probably. To be fair, very, I very think crazy. Twisted Leagues was the single best leagues they've come out with so yeah, far. 100%. It was so 100%. good. 100%. Yeah. Because I feel like the theory crafting in that was really like. Oh, it's next it level. It really felt important to unlock mm -hmm. an area because there were downsides to other areas. I think it took and theory offline. crafting outside of the elite. Like, it seems like generally with yeah. other versions of theory crafting, only the top level players are doing it. But during that leak, everybody was coming up with their own theories. And that's what made it so cool. Because I remember him unlocking Defenders before yep. I did, but I unlocked Mortania before he did. Yeah. Or something like that. And. We really had like different experience because of it. Yeah. But then again, I could tell him, okay, Mortania is worth unlocking. And he was like, yeah, this area is really worth unlocking. Mm -hmm. Because he already went to Vandals and he told me, oh, with all the relics you have, Vandals is really easy to do and whatever. You could camp it. And I was able to get like full Vandals and, yep. you know, go to Cerberus, etc. It was it was amazing. Yeah. And yeah, it was I want the regions. So, and we kind of just talked about this uh, with... um. With group Iron Man mode, do you think mm -hmm. leagues would work in RuneScape 3? Yes. Yeah, me too. 100%. I can't 100%. believe they haven't done it. And that's why I dislike Fresh Start World so much is because I, when I first heard it, I, I got excited. You know what I mean? Same. I really thought it was going to be RuneScape 3 leagues, and it wasn't. And I'm sad. <laughs> like, I, I, I am sad about it. I, I do, however, think, um, and this might me just be me being yep. very optimistic. Yep. Is that Fresh Start Worlds has its purpose, mm -hmm. and I think its purpose is actually quite good, which might be a bit controversial. It's something that um, what's his name said? Um, oh, what was the, I can't think of his name. Uh, former product manager of Old School Runescape, uh, Matt K. Matt K. Mod right. Matt K. Yes, sir. Yes, he was on a podcast recently, and he talked about why Fresh Start Worlds is a genius idea. Yeah, because. A lot of people that play RuneScape 3 or Old School RuneScape that haven't played in a while or just, you know, feel like they are behind starting because everyone is so far ahead. Yeah. With Fresh Start Worlds, they get an opportunity to kind of be 
on the same level equal as playing ground else catch up or whatever. yeah yeah and that is a good thing but <coughs> i also do think and it, here's where my optimism comes in mm -hmm. is that they might be seeing because obviously the runescape 3 fresh up world has some leaks elements like leaked light elements into it yeah of course it, it's a it's a similar idea, right? Like it's a fresh yeah. start world. That's what leagues is every time. It's a fresh economy. Um, and then they had, what were they? I don't know. I didn't play enough fresh start worlds, but didn't they have certain things like that increased your yeah, like infinite boons. run energy, yeah, like, stuff yeah, like that, uh, the porter thing, the yeah. armor sets, whatever. And those are very leak esque things. Just very yeah, of course. Not that like interesting in my opinion. Yeah, but. I generally think that they might be looking at it and seeing like, okay, there are people that enjoy this. There are people, they, they're probably throw out surveys that we don't know about, but Jerry does a lot of surveys mm -hmm. um, with player groups and especially player groups that are not on Reddit and Twitter. Oh yeah. People, um, uh, every company does, has massive amounts of data that we don't know about on their yeah. own player base and potential players. Every company does this. Like I think Matt K in the podcast said that about like, 20 or 30 percent of the people that play old school actually vote on the polls oh yeah so that means that 70 percent of the player base just never interacts with I, i've seen content creators talk about this before but you have need to you guys need to understand by watching this stream by engaging with any runescape 3 content in any way shape or form that isn't just the video game you're already in the top five percent of hardcore consumers of the content that comes out for this game. The majority yep. of people that play RuneScape, they log in, they don't know who the RS guy is, they don't know who the moderators are. They just play the game. They don't they're not to say they're clueless, but they just don't know about that kind of stuff. By watching content on things, you're already in like the top 5%. <laughs> but exactly, and I feel like that is very valuable for developers. Yeah. But it is also very important to not just listen to them because mm -hmm. for us, it's not important that Hats Oasis becomes a thing. Yeah, yeah. But their data might be saying there's a lot of people that struggle with mid-level oh. agility, so we need a mid-level Absolutely. I, th I think video game developers need to listen to the entirety of the player base and not yeah. focus too much on one section. 100%. And I, th I think that is that is something that is super important that a lot of people tend to forget. Like you said, the people who are on Twitter, Reddit, Twitch, YouTube, whatever, they're the top 5% of hardcore easily. players. Yeah. And they have way different views on how the game should be run. And, they, and that makes sense because I don't care about a level 70 agility course because I'm level 103 agility. Yeah. So why would I care? I mean, probably. I don't care about it anymore either. No, exactly. Gamer. Absolute gamer, dude. <laughs> w w what's your agility level? <laughs> it's uh, 80. <laughs> See, absolute gamer. Yeah, I don't care about no control. level 70 bullshit, okay? No, nah, bro. <laughs> like, so, so from now on, we just don't need it in a game anymore. Yeah, no. And that's how a lot of people think. And that yeah. is... Well, and I, I noticed that because I'm somewhat of a new player to RuneScape. I think I'm coming out of that new player stage. I'm, I'm turned into a different kind of player. Yeah. I've, I've, you know, 50 days played on this account. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, I think when I was coming out, a lot of people, they forgot what the uh, beginning of RuneScape looked like. So I'd yeah. be, I'd have, you know, I finally got my Gothic staff and uh, I've got full Lunars. People are like, go do God Wars 2. While it is possible, and I probably could do it now that I have hundreds of kills on God Wars 2 bosses, at the yeah. time, that was not possible for me. It just wasn't. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I had to learn the boss. I had to go through it. I had to understand it. And I think people forget about that, right? Especially people who have been playing this game for a very long time. So that's just one example of how these opinions change. We have no idea what a person who is actually just opening up RuneScape for the first time is thinking. It's impossible for us to put ourselves in that frame of mind because the last time we opened up RuneScape for the first time was 17 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I and mean? <laughs> I feel like that is also something that content creators need to take into account when they're making a guide. Yeah. Is I made a ports guide on getting the completions requirement. Mm. I still went over how you get a ship, how yep. you use your ship, how you get your crew, whatever, because 
I don't know if someone might be watching this that just genuinely needs support guide, not even for comp, but just yeah. you know, wonders up on port to be like, hey, this looks interesting. I just don't know how it works. I just watch a video. On I it. could literally go watch that video right now, and I guarantee you, I would learn something because for me, ports was very much, very, very confusing as a new player. Go watch it. It's, it's. I, I think it's what like it's not my best. I think my best one is Crosis. Mm -hmm. Um, but then again, like Crows as well. Like I just assumed. Like, at least you had a picture of the arena, assuming you've never even seen the arena. Yeah, which is good, because Krosis as a new player, that's daunting. Uh, luckily, I had a team of friends who were able to show yeah. me it. And even now, I still make a ton of mistakes at Krosis. But, like, that's a confusing uh, scenario uh, for a new player, 100%. And if you use something like Sus Alert mm -hmm. and know how the arena looks, know what your role is, know that you... She tell people that you're a learner. Yep. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> um, and then it's it's it probably also comes from like I think like this might sound selfish, and I yep. really don't want to come across like arrogant, like oh look at me. Yeah, Shavarek's an asshole for sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm a social worker, right? Yep. My job is to work with people with actual mental impairment that yep. have like lower IQ scores and stuff. Yeah. So like I need to be able to explain things in a very understanding manner. Understanding matter. Yeah. So that people understand that. And I think that or at least I try to translate that to my RuneScape videos as well. What you're trying and to say is you are not trying to call the general RuneScape population um people that are in need of social work, but you're also trying to <laughs> say that your career does benefit you because it allows you to explain things yes. very simply. Yeah, I, I get what yes. you're getting at, and I see why you were treading carefully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. It's also hard to say because, like, I feel like as soon as you also say that you're good at something, people are like, oh, yeah, he's just arrogant. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's, just, he's just cocky or whatever. But I'm yeah. just like, I think I know my strengths, and I also know my weaknesses, is that I can ramble on a bit too long. That's important, dude. That's that's How's huge. Work next hour, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, no, that's huge. I, I think I don't know my strengths and weaknesses when it comes to content creation because I'm so goddamn new at it. Uh, yeah. I'm really, as they say, flying by the seat of my pants and just figuring it out as I go. Um, so that's huge. If you do know your strengths and weaknesses and you know how to play to them, I think yeah. that's what's going to be what separates you and uh, puts you apart, right? Yeah, and, and that's something I think is interesting as well. Guys, look, I'm going to bring something up. <laughs> I've oh talked to Waydot about this before the stream. Mm-hmm. This is not out of jealousy. This is not out of hate. This mm -hmm. is not out of assuming things. So, guys, Shavarik's an angry. asshole. I already told you guys. Exactly. Um, but I think to a lot of people, your channel looked like something fishy was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have talked because about this, and you're not the only one who's mentioned this. I generally thought I saw your channel, so yeah. I saw your video. Old school RuneScape player starts RuneScape three. And I, I think what I saw, it had like either 80K or 100K views. Yeah. And I was like, this is very curious. But yeah. I, my first reaction was he probably is some sort of other, like he's a bigger streamer. He's a bigger YouTuber. He comes from, from scratch, game, baby. <laughs> Zero exactly. to 100K, literally. And then I looked into <laughs> yeah. just the description, into you as a, a person. I looked at your Twitter, your Twitch, and I was like, something fishy is going on, mate. <laughs> It was insane. Yeah, 100%. And then I actually watched the video and I saw that the video was actually good content. Yep. It wasn't just something like, hey guys, welcome to my RuneScape regression video. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's only like slightly that. better than that, though. Let's get real here, especially because no, like, I had a shitty mic at the time. Credit. Like, it generally, <laughs> like, it, it captured me and I feel like the editing was good. Obviously, you've improved, but like, mm. For a first video, it was like really good, and you had general excitement about yeah. things. Yeah, and then I just kind of like looked into it because my first reaction was also like, "Did he do something fishy, like a view bot or whatever?" Like I don't even know how you would do. Well, that. and let me let me give you some defense here because I do see people mm -hmm. saying whatever. Uh, yeah, bro, you don't get a hundred and fifty thousand views in the RuneScape three section on YouTube. No, you don't. Uh, there's been very few scenarios where that's happened. Uh, like a friend uh, years ago. Uh, I know actually another um, <laughs> Iron Man progress that does this is Dark World Order. Uh, his yeah, his original his well. original video yeah. has up to 270,000 now. But yeah. the reason that happens, the reason I think it happened 
is it especially with mine is I hit the old school RuneScape uh, algorithm as well because it's old school RuneScape player tries RuneScape three. So it was pulling yeah. from two different audiences, I think. And, and I just I got lucky. It's it, there's a big yeah. luck factor. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. And that doesn't take away anything for what you don't because you put in the hours you put in like the like the quality is there. Like, luck is just being see. at the right place at the right time. Exactly. With yeah, that quality and things like that. And I think that is, I think it's just a very interesting thing because what you say, like, I think is fully, fully true. Mm. And I think you will also experience like different struggles because of it, because you didn't get that early struggle. So yeah. To say. Yeah. So uh, I didn't have to deal with the YouTube growing pains. I'm sitting at 15.3 thousand subscribers. Uh, I didn't have to struggle with the ELO hell that is, you know. 1,000 to like 5,000, yeah. right? Where you're currently sitting, to be honest. It's yeah. very difficult because you have videos, you don't have enough of a subscriber base for your videos to get pushed into the algorithm every time. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, like my videos, like I, I even when I post videos that aren't RuneScape related, they really uh, hurt my channel. They suck. That's why I'm not going to be doing that anymore. Um, Please, but you. when I post RuneScape videos, it's at minimum, we're talking at least... 20,000 impressions the first day, right? Because yeah. it just knows to put it in the algorithm because I have a subscriber base that does click on it. Yeah, 100%. It's, that, think, it's the same uh, like richer get richer idea. Growth equals yes. more growth. It, it's, just, it's just a snowball effect because yeah. if you can provide that content and people click on it because they already clicked on it, yeah. YouTube will recommend it more because YouTube recommends it more. Other people see it and be like, hey, that's actually good content. And then... Yep, yep. And I think what Next is saying as well, Ultra's community also interacts with content creators a lot more as well. That's quite apparent in the view counts on Twitch for each game. Absolutely. That is very true. And also something that I find very interesting and it kind of bothers me as someone who likes to be creative mm -hmm. is a lot of R3 players in the comment section of my videos, your videos, Protoch videos, Nostal's videos, Frax well, maybe not Fraxy's videos, but yeah, Fraxy's Fraxy goat, Fraxy is too, go too goaded um, to get these comments. <laughs> silenced whoever yeah they get comments saying oh you're just uploading the same thing as all these other content creators are yeah and the issue with that is and you know this is that the runescape community doesn't want other content because as soon as you do something different the views are sometimes not even half like a quarter of what you would normally get yeah and People could say like oh well it's if you enjoy making it you should do it but then again usually those more creative videos also take more time to make. Mm -hmm. 100%. And Dude, let me just uh, put this out mm -hmm. there for people. It used to take me a very long time to make an Iron Man episode because mm -hmm. I didn't understand the format. I didn't understand how I wanted to edit them. I was still learning everything about it. Dude, mm -hmm. I can bust out an Iron Man episode in a day and a half if I don't sleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I can do this very quickly now. Um, 100%. But when I try and do something different, we are talking hours and hours of editing and stylistic choices that are slightly different from what you're used to, so they don't feel good. And why are you going to put in that much effort to receive half the amount of views? Sometimes way less than half. Yes. Yeah. And like I gave you that example as well. Like I did a series called, um, what was it called again? Chronological Man Mode. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Where I, where I completed everything in chronological order, where it's just like, okay, if there's a mob, I need to slay it. If there's an item, I need to collect. It. Yeah. Very simple concept. But I thought, you know what? It's quite interesting and kind of taking people through the history of RuneScape. The idea of what Jimmy's doing by release, but doing yes. it on RS3. Yeah. And a bit of a broader scale with not just quests. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I thought that's an interesting idea. It might not pop off like an old school RuneScape series does, but like it will probably do equally as well as my regular progress videos. Yeah. But it got like 200 views and one episode took me about 50 hours to make mm -hmm. at like Lombridge. Like I had to get 40 mining yeah. to Smith Adamant using a bronze pickaxe. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fun. It's a cool way to play the game and stuff. But God, if you're a content creator, you need people to watch it yeah. at least as much as your normal content. Not even more or the same. Half would be good. Yeah. Half would be yeah, a good exactly. amount. If like, and I, I, go ahead. Go on, go on, no, go on. For me, I haven't really tried making any different RuneScape content. Um, mm -hmm. I've done two, I've done three forms of content on my channel. I've done my Iron Man Progress, 
I've done my talking head where I disagree with everybody about everything, apparently. And then I've done my um, my World of Warcraft content. Now, yep. my RuneScape, my Iron Man series, always does really well. My talking head stuff mm-hmm. usually did about half as well, which I was okay with. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My World of Warcraft, which I understand, completely different game, obviously, doesn't do mm-hmm. well at all. No longer will that be on the main channel. But I understand that. But I'm interested to yeah. see when I start a new Iron Man, or if I ever try a different kind of RuneScape 3 series, what the reaction will be. I ha- So I don't have enough experience in this realm, I guess is what I'm saying, to really be able to comment on that. The only thing that I can tell you about it, because... So I have my completion series, which is my main getting completion scape yep. and completing collection walks. Yep. And I have my new Iron Man series. Yep. They are... My Iron Man series is actually doing equally as well, if not slightly like not that much better but slightly better than my main series yeah that's good and that is exactly what i wanted to like i don't need it like obviously it would be nice if it gets 10 times the amount of views if it gets your views (laughs) yeah but it's 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 perfect where it is right now like Mm -hmm. that that makes me happy because then you're just like okay well i'm starting this new project and it's actually you know catching on as long as you're, the stuff you're working on, I feel like as long as it catches up or does slightly better, you're always yeah. going to feel good about it. And feeling good about 100%. it is what's going to allow you to keep making the content and keep making better and better things, right? Uh, I think where content creation burnout comes from is when you do something new and it doesn't get appreciated and you try yeah. it again and again and again and it just keeps getting worse. Because I kind of felt that with my World of Warcraft stuff, even though I expected mm-hmm. it. I felt that kind of feeling and it sucks. It's not fun. And it then... Does. What it, what kind of happened to me? I had a bad week there. I'm I'm good now, but I had a week there where I was kind of resenting RuneScape. I didn't want to log into RuneScape because I feel like that's people just want to see me play RuneScape. They don't like me for this or for, for that. But it's a mental game, and it was tough. But I'm I'm doing better that's with it. That's something you wanted but, to talk you know. about as well with like the burnout. Well, I did because when I hit you up about uh, doing this mm-hmm. uh, this podcast type of thing, I was kind of going through it. But I, yeah. it, it's gone now. I don't feel the burnout anymore, and I'm feeling great about playing RuneScape. So I think I just had a, a moment of weakness, if you will. Do you know what I mean? But how, how can we make sure that moment of weakness never happens again? <laughs> <laughs> um, it stop me from finding new games. Stop me from playing other MMOs. <laughs> because, dude, I want to try out Guild Wars 2, and I guarantee you I'm going to play that for a week straight, and I'm going to be like, dude, I'm quitting RuneScape. I'm done. But then I, I won't actually quit because I, I, I can never quit RuneScape. I've played RuneScape my whole life, right? <laughs> so I, I generally think that it almost crumbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that is where I'm quite lucky with the type of content I'm making mm. is obviously your heavily progress space. Yeah. You need Entirely. to play the game. Yeah, 50 hours of video at least. Exactly. Yeah. And I can just... I make a lot of opinion videos and I mean, I will always follow the game even if I'm playing another game. Yeah. So even if I'm, the new Pokemon comes out next month, that's what I'll probably be streaming for like a month. Dude, sweet. We'll have and... to tune into some of his Pokemon stuff, guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> RC, please rise our sport. I actually um, have quite a few like Pokemon fans in, in our chat, I lo- in our community. Like, I'm, so. I'm an absolute, I will get it a day early as well. So if people are actually really curious. Oh, hell yes. Exclusive. Um, but the thing is, like, I will be streaming that for a month because streaming is not, like, my main hustle. It's my huge at this point. Yeah. But I'll... Jesus Christ, someone just followed me and it scared the <laughs> living hell out of me. Oh, my Lord. Yo, get him. I'm He's got his follow notice oh, really stop. loud. Everyone, go follow him quick. No, please don't. <laughs> Do, but don't. Oh, That's my funny. Lord. It was so loud. Oh, <laughs> ow. <laughs> That's funny. Um, thank you, Esper. Um, but no, the thing is, like, I have that freedom. And mm-hmm. with my content, like, I will still be following RuneScape. I'll still be playing it. And I can just, you know, open Audacity, sit there for, like, 15 minutes, yeah, talk some smack, and then edit it together. And within an hour, I'm back to playing Pokemon. Wait, you use Audacity to record your voice? Yeah, of course. Oh, it's crazy to me. I don't. What do you, what I do use, you use? I use OBS. <laughs> Why? Because it records everything for me. I just use one program. Is Audacity better? <laughs> Should I look into this? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, All right, we'll we'll talk well, later about it, but okay. Anyway, yeah, go ahead, like, go ahead. Audacity <laughs> is like I also edit my audio in Audacity. Yeah, it, it can get. Caught. I will, we'll talk about it later because mm-hmm. we don't want to bore. Also, I'm very curious. I'm, I want to ask your chat something. Also, thank you, Master. Yeah, go ahead, Master Master 
Arctic. I Myth mean, says Arctic. Audacity is spyware. Does it? <laughs> I don't. I only believe about half of what Myth I, says I've, most of the time. I've read so. about that, but I have a very old version of Audacity, so hmm. don't know if that has it or only the new ones. Yeah. Anyway, that doesn't matter. We'll, we'll look into it. Yep. Um, I'm very curious to ask Chad this because it's an idea that I've had. Is okay. do you think people would be interested in a video on how to make content? How to make RuneScape content? Yeah, like literally, like how do you set up a stream? How do you record gameplay? How do you record audio? How do you? I feel like edit? that's super super saturated. On, on YouTube. Do you know what I mean? I feel like there's a mm. million videos. But, but I feel people like are saying yes. It's very buggy with how it works. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Like with most games, you just whack on a game capture. Yeah. You click on the game. Yeah, RuneScape's, RuneScape's, uh, RuneScape, RuneScape takes a little bit longer to figure out for sure. Yeah. I think if you, if you made mm. the niche of that video, how to create RuneScape content, yeah. A lot of people would watch that. But I think you have yeah. to have that um, that niche be part of it because I think there's a lot of videos out there uh, that are probably going to be better than anything you and I could make that are guides 100%. on making content, right? Because, like, for example, like a really bare-bones bare example, what do you use to record your clips? Like, how do you record your clips? Mm -hmm. Are you just asking me? Yeah, I know. I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I use uh, window capture in OBS. Yeah, okay, but like, do you just have recording on all the time? No, not at all. Do you use replay buffer or do you click recording? When I press record happens? when I want clips, yeah. Do you know what replay buffer is? Is that what keeps recording all the time and then you can hit stop essentially anytime anything happens? Is yes, that the idea? And it will yeah. save like one minute or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like using that. Um, That's fair. I generally plan out my clips. I know when things are going to happen, so I'll have like. Obviously, if I'm killing a boss for the first time or whatever, right? Can I get a pog? Yeah, absolutely. I just collected all the Elven Diaries in the clans. And nice! I just got another completionist content. Bro, congrats. <laughs> That's huge. Congrats, dude. I don't have 200 laps. So we'll oh, can I get a pog? Pog. Basically for RuneScape. 91 Divination, only from doing energies. This is ridiculous. Okay, can I get a pog for that as well? Yeah, let yeah. Me, let me... <laughs> we'll put the best pog on Twitch in there. Congrats, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Okay, All right, man. your dip. <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna have to wrap this up for a couple of reasons. All First right. of all, I need to use the restroom, and also no, I no. want to put this conversation on YouTube, and I want it to be a somewhat digestible amount of time. You know what I mean? <laughs> also, yep. Why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Edit it down to like the topics we talked about. I'm going to. It's going to be slightly edited for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. We can't have all yeah. our, our goffs and fuck ups in so, here. So, so no O's rest versus R's 3 debate? <laughs> uh, oh, we can get into that next time. How about that? Yeah, that, that's, that's a good one. All right, man. And leave people on that because, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that, that could get <laughs> heated. Good. Yeah. It's a good thing we live in oh, different yeah. countries. Otherwise, we might start uh, throwing hands. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I can take you. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the stream. Everyone, please go check out Chevalric. Uh, really cool guy, obviously. Uh, go check out his videos. Lots of discussion videos. And his progress videos are cool, too. So check those out. Um, anyway, man. Check out Waydot. Yeah, no, nah, don't worry about him. He's, he's an asshole these days. 